What's up, guys? Welcome back to my podcast, my channel, What It Do. If you don't know, now you know I do my podcast at the same time. I do my YouTube channel. Woot woot. <laughs> I just gotta stop getting on here and acting a fool. Before we get into this video, already, you already know, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share, as well as on the podcast. You already know what you can do. Okay, don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with anybody that you feel like needs to hear it. Okay, and I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I hope you all are having a good night, good day, good evening, uh, morning, whenever you're watching this. If you're on YouTube, then you know it's definitely daylight out right now. I got my coffee and I'm chilling right now. That's why I'm in my, you know, hoodie and stuff and... <sighs> I'm just, this topic is much needed, I feel. We all have gone through that one toxic relationship, and so I'm like, you know what? Toxic relationships, that's what we're going to talk about. So, let's get to it. Now, you already know, before we get into anything, we do answer, or we ask questions, okay? And so, what can make a toxic relationship, and how... And when is it time to stop being in that toxic relationship? How do we know? Toxic relationships have always been something in my life, basically. Um, whether it's with friends, family, significant others, literally, they just in my life. And so, I think with toxic relationships, there can be so many questions that are left unanswered and can leave your mental state all jumbled up. For me, personally, I'm not understanding how to deal with my or face my emotions about it so you know my own personal experiences with toxic relationships um it was both of us a lot of times people aren't aware of their um own personal patterns because they're so focused on others but we both literally uh have personal issues that need to be addressed and uh focusing on the other one is such a trending start and because of it's always a trending star to these type of topics, we are just going to jump right into that part being the first potion portion of this. Keeping red flags at the beginning and ignoring them was one, you know. Um, I literally, especially with the previous one, I knew this fool was doing stuff and just red flags was popping off literally from the minute he opened his mouth talking to me. And so I just was like, you're toxic. I don't need to be around you, but you're fine as hell. That's how I was thinking, but you know, shit happens and things happen. <laughs> <laughs> Catching them in unnecessary lies, okay? They, and when I say unnecessary lies, I'm talking about them dumbass lies that people do, and you know the truth already, but they just lied so hard that you looking at them like, really? Really? You you can just tell the truth? Like, that was so unnecessary. Unnecessary lies. Them not putting in the same effort I felt or needed, needed to be put in that I was putting in. That was a big problem for me when I feel like every relationship in my past. I'm just like, bro, I put in so much effort and these folks do not match it. And, um, like, I guess a sense of hating on me because I might have came from a different background than them and so to them I'm spoiled as shit or I get everything handed to me but I go through problems just like anybody else and I don't get everything handed to me thank you very much but you don't know me just to name a few of my personal uh, experience um I feel like if you aren't quite sure of what uh a toxic relationship might consist of a few more would definitely be like feeling drained, lack of trust, um, constant judgment, lack of communication, literally all take and no give. Um, they're unreliable, bro. And this is in a mental and emotional state is what I'm really talking about because when I tell you, if I'm emotionally supporting you, but when it's my time that I need it, you can't, that's a big problem to me. Because then I'm just like, I can't even rely on you to be there for me when I'm down, but you expect somebody to be there for you when you're down. And so, 
I just, I don't get that with people. But um, also, like, not being supportive or, like, um, mutual avoidance. You both are starting to literally, to the point, avoid each other or one person is avoiding the other because you're sick and tired of them instead of just cutting all ties. Like, I just, I don't get that. But, you know, whatever floats your boat, I suppose. But you toxic. You toxic. Physical, mental, and emotional abuse, bro. It's a touchy subject for me. Definitely something that I've gone through, and I think that that's a big thing. Um, making someone feel so low to the point where they become suicidal or depressed, whatever the case might be, but their mental state is uh, at stake at the moment, and it's in jeopardy. And I just don't think that that's cool. I never want the the place when I was that low and I ended up going into the mental facility. I never want anybody to be that at that point of my life where I was at at the moment. Those are definitely the most important in my book. Um, all of these I've named that I've seen in like my relationships since I started dating. And let me just say, although some people find it easy. Uh, to let someone go when dealing with uh, these toxic traits, it's not so easy for somebody who might have already been, like, well immune to it. And now, just like somebody who is being physically abused or battered, they become brainwashed into thinking that those things are okay that the other person or both people are doing. It's not, and it's hard to get out of it, and... Um, you have to either experience it or put yourself in their shoes or listen to this podcast or YouTube video to know, like, it's not that easy for them people. It definitely wasn't for me. I literally stayed around three and a half years. One of my biggest moments in time when dealing with the toxic relationship was my most recent one I was with. And that relationship brought a lot of pain, confusion, resentment, frustration. Uh, I still feel like that to this day and it's been like probably a year and a half two years but it affects my life and the people that I bring into my life now so it's a big thing to me and so um in the end although the road to recovery has been long and rough like I do not regret my process that I've been going through since then and slowly being able to find way be my way back in my purpose in life. With toxic relationships, I feel like a good thing to do is when you see these red flags at the jump, listen to them. If somebody shows you who they are, believe them. Okay, literally. And so me ignoring them was like my number one F up that I should have never did in the first place. Because when I did that, all hell breaks loose. Things become worse and it's just unhealthy. And I would never wish stuff like that on anybody else because it's painful and I totally get it. And knowing self-love and having self-love first before you get into any type of friendship or relationship uh, with people that come into your life in the future, I think is a big thing because when you have the self-love, then you know your worth and you know what you deserve and what you don't deserve, you know. This was not supposed to be a, you know, big, big, huge, long video. It was just something for if you are trying to figure out if you're in a toxic relationship or not, literally, or what you could do about it and things I've experienced a little bit, but... Um, I hope you enjoyed, okay, and I'm sorry it was all over the place, I was tired a little bit, but, you know, I hope you enjoyed and you found some insight that was a little helpful with this, knowing that it's, you know, okay to not be okay, and, um, share, share this with everybody that you feel is in a toxic relationship and needs to get out because your mental state can be in jeopardy and, you don't want to hit rock bottom and that be either fatal or it's just an all-time low because those all-time lows are like and can be bad and long breaks and pauses in your life. They end up being healthy if you get the right and proper help for them and positive um, input in your life. But if you are not able to, then... It can be a tough road, but I do also want to say that you can put yourself 
in a positive vibe and surround yourself with positive energy if you do it. You have to be the change that you want to see in your life and in the world. And it starts with you. So whenever you feel like you're comfortable and you're to the point of you just can't take it and stuff, um, feel free to, if you feel like you don't have anybody to talk to you or you're feeling suicidal, you can always reach out to the suicide helpline prevention line with that and talk to someone there and they're somebody that you don't know of course but they're there to listen and that's probably one thing that you really need at the moment also just letting allowing yourself to sulk in the process when it does get to that point and knowing that it's not going to be a negative process Forever, It's not going to be a frustrating and hard process forever. It's going to l eventually ease up and you're going to love it. I enjoy my process I'm going through right now and I feel like it's changed me in so many ways. I'm totally different. Um, and change is something too that a lot of people don't think about because change is uncomfortable. Change is weird. Change is, can be negative or positive and uh, people that you might have in your life, they might not like those changes, but those changes might be what you needed in your life. And so friends and family and relationships will come and go with those changes, but they'll positive and new ones that are good for you will be brought in. So just something to think about. Um, like I said, I didn't want the video to be too long, but I hope you learned something from it, got something from it, and don't forget to like, comment, and share, and share um, feedback on your opinions, your experiences. I'm here. I'm open ears. I'm willing to listen and help you if I can. Thank you for tuning in, and I cannot wait to see you guys and hear from you guys in the next episode and video. So... Bye. <laughs> so these were just two posts that I wanted to put on the end because I thought they were helpful. So um, take a look at them and uh, give me some insight on what you thought about them. Bye. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs>